The Superlights Challenge is powered by Pirelli. Syntex Innovative Lubricants. Autosportinsurance.com and IDIS High Definition Surveillance Systems. The third round of the IDIS Superlights Challenge, the championship for quick and nimble prototypes and sports cars, was held at Zolder in the Syntex Super Prix. In this episode, we take a look at the highlights of both races in Group 1 with the latest generation of CN prototypes and Group 2 with brands such as Radical, Norma and this Praga R1. Cars in both groups have sophisticated aerodynamics and at Zolder, that doesn't really work too well. The 4km Belgian track depends mainly on mechanical grip. It wasn't much different over 30 years ago when they still had Formula races here at Zolder. Its most tragic moment, the death of Gilles Villeneuve during qualifying for the Belgian Grand Prix in 1982. Driver safety has increased greatly over the years, but the challenge of Zolder remains the same. We start our action with the first IDIS Superlights Challenge race of the weekend. Again on pole, Luke de Kock and Sam de Jong from Deldish Racing. In the previous race weekend at Zolder, they were dominant, winning both races, but they weren't happy with the balance of their Norma M20 FC. So has the problem now been solved? No, can you Not all quite all there yet with the setup, says so Sam de Jong. We're struggling a little bit with understeer in the fast turns. In the slow corners, we've got the car set up perfectly, but that's really just down to fine tuning. Overall, the car's very good. We can keep up a good pace. But of course, as a driver, you always want a perfect car, so there's still things that we need to improve. Sam de Jong was invited by Luke de Kock to join him this season in the IDIS Superlights Challenge and the youngster's performances have not gone unnoticed. He says I've been invited to join Mark VDS Racing, Mark van der Straten Racing. I'll be part of their junior programme that they started this year. I've worked really hard to be part of the programme. I've been dreaming of something like this for years to join such a professional team. So they've given me that chance to work my way up in GT3, maybe even become part of the BMW motorsport team. I'm very grateful and that's my ambition at the moment. Most experienced man on the whole field is probably Pim van Riet. He'll start the first race in second place with his V8-powered Radical SR8. On the second row, the Wolf GB08 of York Schumacher, championship leader with teammate Joe van Splunter and they're only three points ahead of Sam de Jong and Luke de Kock. Not on the grid though, Tim Yosen and Glenn Havrels, who lie third in the championship. They should start fifth, but in qualifying, it all went wrong with their Tartus. Tim Yosen explains their tale of woe, saying, at the start of the qualifying session, everything was going according to plan. We were second quickest. So I came in to make a change to tyre pressure. But when I went out again, when I brake for the left-hand turn in the pit lane exit, the throttle was jammed. That's the worst possible moment. I just slammed into the guardrail, damaged the whole right side of the car. We can fix everything except for one tiny but really important part that holds the wishbones together. We'll get the bit here tonight, so we'll race tomorrow for sure. But we won't do the sprint race today, and that's a shame. In Group 2, Donald Molinars with the Radical SR3 RSX will start from pole position. Yeah, it ging op zich lekker. It is a last minute file. Qualifying was okay, said. Kind of a last minute deal to be driving this Radical this weekend. Had a little bit of trouble finding the right setup on these tyres, but seems to be okay. We qualified with another group, so it was important to have a clear lap. I had a couple near the end of the session, and that was enough to take the pole. Well, Molinar was two tenths of a second faster than a newcomer in the Superlights Challenge, Dick Freeberg, driving a Radical SR3 as well. He lines up in second, ahead of Paul Celius with the Praga R1, third in Group 2. Championship leader Philip de Klerk didn't qualify well in his green and white Norma. He'll start in fourth. So looking forward then from the new car of Dick Freebird, you can see York Schumacher's Black Wolf on our right. Donald Molinar, the pole sitter. Away we go and a good level start from Luke de Kock in the white car. Pim van Riet on the outside of the front row. Van Riet takes the lead. Through goes the green and white car of Philip de Klerk. And that is David Hotoft. Kokopian just in front with a yellow tail in his radical. He went by as well. So he's in third place. David Hotoff goes around the outside of us for fourth, but he's going to lose ground there on the curb. So we're back up into fourth place. 
It's all arms and elbows in the first couple of corners here. Kokopian in third position. And Freebird now in fourth spot. Philippe de Klerk leading Group 2. Pim van Riet leading the race and in Group 1 from the outside of the front row. Holthoff shoots by into the first chicane. 255 horsepower in the Norma, about 210 in the Radical. So that was just pure engine power. Dirt kicked up in front as Kopian comes under attack. Pim van Riet leading the race from the white Norma of Luc de Kock, then York Schumacher in the Black Wolf, Black Norma, Jean-Luc Riol, then Philippe Leclerc leading Group 2, the green and white car. Here's the battle for third, Kokopian with David Hotov down the inside into Esterlink, so he moves through. Kopian tries to counter-attack. Kopian now right in front of us, the 2013 champion, Kokopian. It's a battle of the two radical SR3s. And Kapian right in front, but doesn't seem quite to have the speed of Freebird. Down towards the end of lap two, he's just about to lose another place. Freebird on the inside into the Jackie X chicane, and he moves up. Well, it's an engine problem, which eventually brings Kokopian's race to a halt. Philip Leclerc leading from Donald Molinar, David Holtoft in third, as Freebird and Kopian come across the line ahead of Philip Daniels, Paul Celius. Then Heinz Kramer, Wim Juris, 8th and 9th. Pim van Riet chased by Luc de Kock all the way through the 30-minute sprint race, but he finishes five seconds ahead of the Deldisch Norma to claim victory. It might have looked easy, but Pim van Riet knew the potential of the Norma behind. If you look at the spec sheets, the Norma's a much quicker car, he said, so I needed to be on the edge at the start. If I allowed him next to me, I can only follow him after that, so I managed to keep him behind throughout the whole race, had enough to win the race. Luke saying I didn't have enough horsepower to attack. If the straight hadn't been so long, I might have had a chance. But at the start, he was off and away. I could only follow. Ah, that's how it is. Philip de Klerk took the lead of Group 2 on lap 1. He was chased by radical drivers Donald Molinar and Dick Freeberg. But de Klerk wins his fourth race out of five by just two tenths of a second, extending his championship lead in Group 2. Up until now, the Group 1 grid has been comprised of CM prototypes and the V8 Radicals, but with the arrival of the brand new generation of LMP3 cars, change is on hand. Here at the Cintiq Super Prix, Luxembourg's Prime Racing are the first team in the Super Lights Challenge to enter a LMP3 car. This is the Ginetta. For them, it's a new series and a new car, so the full potential has really yet to be realized. The problem is that it is a new car, it's still in the early stages of development. That's why we've entered the car this weekend, to see what problems crop up when you compete in a sprint and in an endurance race. For us, it's not really a, a, a true race, this competition, it's more of a test than a race. The Ginetta LMP3 has a 5-litre Nissan V8. It's driven by Jean-Pierre Lecoeur, Jérôme Nouveau and Jean-Marc Ubrican, and they hope to be fully competitive for the fourth round of the championship at Spa. Ready for race two, the endurance race, and it's pole again for the Deldish Racing Norma N20 FC. This time, Sam de Jong will do the first 25 to 35 minute stint. Luke de Kock will take over midway. Henk Tay starts second with the Radical SR8. He'll do the whole race on his own. That'll be no problem, though, for the 70 year old reigning Group 1 champion. Points leaders Jörg Schumacher and Joey Splunteren start from fourth. They need to perform well because they're only one point ahead of Sam de Jong and Luke de Kock. Joe van Splunteren will do the first stint and fully focused for that. She'll be an interesting battle between he and de Jong. So Sam de Jong leading away from Henk Tees, Damien Delafosse third in his Norma, ahead of Joey van Splunteren. Dick Freebird, the man on pole, in Group 2. And alongside him will be Donald Molinar, who started Race 1 on pole position. A few wet patches still on the track after heavy rain. There's Donald Molinar in front of us. Dick Freebird should be alongside him. Oh, it looks like he's trying to get a run here at the lights. Are they going to change their knot? He has to lift off. Pass goes Molinar. He'll take the lead of the class. And there's David Holtoft as well. Look at the black car. Henk Tace shuts the door and Sam de Jong and Joey Van Splinteren went right around the outside to lead in the Wolf and a spinner. And that's de Jong. Dick Freeper just avoided that. De Jong there, the white car very slow, right at the tail of the field. So what happened? Well, Henk Tace in the black car in the center of the shot tries to shut down the white car of De Jong. 
but he blocks him. They leave the door open. Van Splunteren goes around the outside. De Jong on the wet, loops it round, waiting for the impact. Unfortunately, it never comes. Joe Van Splunteren in the Wolf has the lead. He'll hope to hand over a leading car to York Schumacher. Hank Tace recovered from that first corner incident. He's in second place. He didn't have a spin. Damian Dallafoss in third spot. Another group one, Norma. And right behind him, look, the recovering Sam De Jong. He's cut his way through the group two cars. But now these two identical Norma M20 FCs, nose to tail. And De Jong struggling. Can't get by. The cars have the same top speed, same amount of grip. He's got to try and force a mistake out of Dallafoss. And when he gets in the slipstream here in the quick corners, he's going to lose grip and downforce under braking. Oh, and Delafosse just holds it together, goes across the gravel, and somehow comes back in front. Tough battle for Sam de Jong. He'll hope to hand over to Luke de Kock a little higher up than he is now, but it's going to take some work. Comfortable group two lead for Donald Molinar. David Hotoft in second place with Dick Freebird right behind him in third place. There's the Norma white and blue. Group one task is Tim Yosen repaired for race two, starting from the pit lane, slicing through the field and past Philip de Klerk's green and white car. Into fourth goes Vim Uris in the black machine. Philip Daniels six with a Pro Sport Radical. And then Leon Rheinbeck's Radical ahead of the Norma of Heinz Kramer and the Praga R1s, Carlo Kaya and Paul Celius. Now normally they should be further up the grid. Celius having engine problems, but still attacking Carlo Kaya at Balderberg. Kaya's the reigning champion in Group 2, usually a front runner, but he loses a spot here. He's struggling because he started the race on wet, thought the track was wetter than it was. And that's a big mistake. Last time out at Zolder, he spun on the opening lap, colliding with David Hotoft. He hasn't won a race so far this season, and he's failed to finish two of them as well. Another error not going to help his performance here in Zolder. Away he goes to rejoin the race, and we'll have more from the Idis Superlights Challenge Race 2 after the break. The Superlights Challenge is powered by Pirelli, Syntex Innovative Lubricants, Autosportinsurance.com and IDIS High Definition Surveillance Systems. Welcome back to Zolder for the third round of the IDIS Superlights Challenge. We're looking at the second race of the weekend where Pulse to Sam de Jong's blocked at the start by Hank Tace. And Joe Van Splunteren, who starts fourth, sweeps around the outside to take the lead. De Jong spins on the still wet offline track, but within a few laps, he's finding his way back to fourth. He's stuck behind Damian Delafosse, both drivers in identical normas, and that's where we pick up the action. Joe Van Splunteren then leading in the black and gold Wolf GB08. Hank Tace in the V8 Radical SR8 in second place. Damien Delafosse and Sam de Jong battling. Ginetta's LMP3, the green, white and black car, a lap down. They started from the pit lane in what is an extended test session for them. And De Long and Delafosse closing up on Henk Tace as they make their way past the Ginetta. Normally the two Normas battling each other like this would be good for a car in front. They'd be slowing themselves down. But in fact, it seems Sam de Jong is quite happy to sit with Damian Delafosse and let their two cars work together. And the result is clear right in front. That is Hank Tace, the second place Radical SR8. And the 70 year old reigning class one champion being reeled in by both these drivers in their Normas. And this could be the ideal situation for Sam de Jong. He's pushing Damian Delafosse up into the bank of Hank Tace there, right in front. The first of those two black cars. And that might give Sam de Jong the opportunity to get by. Not here into Airs de Linksa though. Carlo Kaya has gone off in his Praga R1. He's being rescued. And just down at the bottom of the shot there. And now they go green. Hank Tace catching a car in front. It's Philip Daniels in the Radical Pro Sport. 
This is a great chance for Sam de Jonge. The pro sport has held up the black car in front of him. He's going to make the move on Damian Delafosse. There's just room to squeeze by. And through he goes under braking. So he's finally got by Delafosse for third place. Henk Tace right in front. And there's more traffic too. It's the green and white Norma, the Group 2 car of Philippe de Klerk. He moves out of the way for Henk Tace. Around goes Sam de Jonge. And through two goes Damian Delafosse. And while he's offline, look, sneaking in. That's a great move from Philip Daniels. He takes fifth place away from the Norma driver. Group two still being led by the white car of Donald Molinar, that radical SR3. David Hotoft with the blue highlights on his Norma M20F. He's second in group two ahead of Dick Freebird. And Freebird piling on the pressure. Whoa, and a mistake from Hotoft. Drifts out wide at the first chicane. And Freebird is over the hill, around the outside, wheel to wheel. He's got the inside line, got to avoid the wet. He does, and he takes second place away from David Hotoft. That was a brave move around the outside. Into the pit stops, Luke de Kock taking over from Sam de Jong. And as he gets ready to go out. De Jong explains, uh, had a good start, should have had the advantage into the Aes de Linksa, but Henk Tace was much quicker with the drag race down in the Radical. But the weird bit was, he was on the dry, he'd have been quicker through the corner, but he decided to block me to defend, maybe. And that kept us both out on the wet part. Fans Blunter went around the outside. I made a stupid mistake, just too eager on the throttle, spun. And then I just my own fault on the side of the when I went on the gas. Drop to the back, tried to make up the lost time, got stuck behind the other Norma and then towards the end of the stint managed to get by him but unfortunately of course we've lost quite a lot of time. Well, talking about time in the mandatory pit stops, drivers have been on the podium in one or more races have to add result seconds to the standard one minute stationary pit stop time. York Schumacher, ready to take over from race leader Joe Van Splinten, has to add just 20 seconds when he gets in. That's five more than de Jonge and de Kock, but their lead was much bigger than that, so they will stay in front. And his vital teams don't make any mistakes with the timing, otherwise they'll be handed a drive-through penalty. Buscars in Racing make no mistakes. They've got a team member at the pit lane entry who starts the stopwatch, then heads toward the end of the pit lane to make sure their driver doesn't leave too early. Joe Van Splunchen had other things on his mind at the beginning of the race though, especially with the unpredictable weather conditions just before he said it was hard to pick the right tyres and right setup. We decided dry weather setup, that turned out to be perfect. And my start was great as well. Henk Tace decided to block into the first corner. I took a big risk, went all the way around the outside, but it worked out perfectly. Jörg Schumacher, new to the Wolf GB08 this season, ends up in trouble, finds the only damp patch on the track. Has to take the escape road, but still holds on to the race lead. Tarsus drivers Tim Yosen and Glenn Havrols had to start from the pit lane as they only just managed to get the car ready for the race after missing out on the sprint. They moved up to fourth. That was as much as they could manage in this race. Luke de Kock in the white car came out in second with 10 result seconds less than Henk Tace, but Tace closed the gap. Battle is on for the runner-up spot. Well, the Radical with horsepower its advantage, downforce and grip there for the Norma is its trump card. But here, down past the pits, Henk Tace with a really good run and Luke de Kock stays on the racing line, does not defend. And that is the change for second place. Jörg Schumacher goes on to win his second race of the season with Joe Van Splunter and they score an extra point for fastest lap as well. Luke de Kock and Sam de Jong had a plan to attack for first in the championship. Two places behind though, their plan failed after Henk Tace got by into second spot. It all came together nicely though for the Wolf duo, Joey van Splunteren and Jörg Schumacher. I think after two thirds of, the, of my stint, the team told me, okay, settle, keep the lap times. That's where I pushed not so hard anymore. But yeah, overall it was hard work, of course, but um, it went pretty good. Our Wolf duo started race two with a single point lead. They now have a five point advantage, but that's hardly a big margin with 34 points on offer each race weekend. David Holtoft hasn't had much luck so far this season, so the Group 2 driver had no result seconds compared to 25 for all his main rivals who were in front of him. 
and that meant that Hotov was able to take the lead after his mandatory pit stop. He came out in front of Donald Molinar in the Radical SR3. The Radical, a little less horsepower, but the aerodynamics of the Norman not helping it so much on this twisty Zolder circuit. And the Radical's mechanical grip, the trump card here, Molinar with a head of steam as well, closing up through the first couple of corners. And he certainly reeled in the Norma driver. Out of Lucien Bianchi box, he's perfectly placed. Is he going to go left or right? Hutoft isn't quite deciding where he's going to try and defend. In the end, goes for the racing line and Molinar throws it at the apex of the first chicane. That's a great move, really well judged. Unfortunately for our new leader, Donald Molinar, what wasn't really well judged was the pit stop timing. They mistimed it and he has to serve a drive through penalty. They've clearly not learned their lesson. The same thing happened last time out at Zolder when he was in Group 1 with the Radical RXC Spider. And that moves Hotov back up to first. In the blue and white, Praga is Paul Celius chasing Leon Rheinbeck for seventh in Group 2. Celius finished on the podium three times already this year, but it seems engine problems are slowing him here. Going to have to ship those back to Praga to get them sorted out. Strange battle here between Dick Freeberg and Vim Uris as well. Freeberg with problems in the Jackie Ick chicane, loses third place. But then, almost immediately in Erste Linksa, Wim Juris seems to slow dramatically and Freebird is able to retake third spot. A battle between two men whose cars don't quite seem to be playing the game. No problems though for David Hotoft. He wins his first race of the season. Great weekend for Norma Benelux. Two of its drivers winning a race at the Syntex Super Prix. Philip de Klerk, a disappointing fifth, but after all the misfortune, David Hotov extremely happy with his race win in race two. Yeah, it was, uh, for us a hell of Kept a good steady race. pace throughout the whole race, taking no risks, he says. Finally, no bad luck for us. I managed to set consistently fast lap times. We had no results seconds because of all the trouble we've had in the previous races, and that helped us out. After a season of bad luck, I'm very happy with the win. Fifth place for Philip de Klerk means he doesn't benefit from Paul Celia's engine problems. They're 15 points apart with two rounds to go at Spa and Assen. And into the top six, David Hotoft. Maybe he's seen the last of his bad luck. That's it then from the Centex Super Prix. Next time out, it'll be the Supercar Challenge GT divisions at Zandvoort during the DTM weekend. We'll see you then. The Superlights Challenge is powered by Pirelli, Syntex Innovative Lubricants, Autosportinsurance.com and IDIS High Definition Surveillance Systems.